Hello Riven Mains and Yasuo Mains alike, I am the Nightwing from Way of Life Esports coming at you guys with another League of Legends video. So in honor of the quarterfinals starting tomorrow in North America, we have the All Pro NA LCS team. Now that's probably going to be full of imports, but hey, it's North America, we can't go wrong. Now, unlike a lot of other people, I don't fanboy over players. I look at gameplay, map rotations, contesting objectives, actual individual mechanics, champion pool. There's a lot of criteria that goes into me actually putting someone on my all pro NALCS team. And I actually have the first, second, and third, ranging from top to bot, starting with uh, my first pick in my all pro NALCS teams, I'm going to range from my first team, second team, and then my third team. In the comment section down below, let me know who is your all pro NALCS team. And like I said before, when you make your all pro list, it's, ge it's genuinely way better if you don't fanboy over players and you actually look at gameplay and how they're performing in the split rather than trying to make them out to be something that they're actually not. With that being said, let's get started right into the video. I'm actually going to have my number one all pro NALCS team and I'm going to start with the top lane and I'm going to start with Licorice. Now, most people would, would probably go, would, wouldn't you think that Impact is actually a lot better this split? Uh, in certain aspects, yes, but I think that Licorice has been the overall better player in general. I feel like he's been, if not the first or second best top laner in the league since he's actually came in when he was obviously competing with Someday. And then last split, he was competing with Someday and Broken Blade. And all three of them were genuinely the best top laners in the, in the split given on a specific day. I feel like his impact on the game itself is just tremendous. He's always the overall carry in the top lane that you want. He can play your tanks that you need as well. He can be your primary engage. He's always getting that lane advantage. He's always pressing his lead. He's always competent on knowing where to be, where to side lane push. He's just the overall complete package for a top laner. Yes, he had a few bad games because, because of his wrist injury. And going off of that aspect alone... The players on this list that I have for every single team have had bad games. But overall, you can't just factor in a few bad games and say, well, he's just not really good. That's not fair because even people like Faker have bad games and people and players like him still get rated very highly. So with that being said, everything I've listed in my criteria for a really good top laner is in Licorice. And even when he's not ahead, the way that he actually impacts the game where he'll go into the enemy jung jungle and just kill the jungler and just making that overall easier for his jungler is something that you just cannot discredit when you're looking at a top laner. And I feel like Licorice, even with his wrist injury, has performed absolutely amazing this split. And he is my first team all pro NALCS top laner. Uh, next up on my list is actually Sven Skarin. Now, this should probably be no surprise to anyone here, actually. Sven Skarin is, with, at, within, without a, a complete doubt, he is the MVP next to Core JJ. If either Core JJ or Sven Skarin win MVP, I would actually not even be mad. Sven Skarin overall is the quality of jungler that you need. He can get your lanes ahead. He invades properly, contests objectives. The team is also centered around him when he actually able to when he is more or less so able to, you know, compete at the highest level, he actually has a very good understanding of where to be on the map, where to put his resources into. It's always feeling like the jungler that plays against him is always on the back foot, and I feel like that he has been the overall be best performing jungler this split. Other junglers will be included later on, but I feel like he has been the best overall performing jungler with a lot of his creative picks. He he's able to play fast. He's able to play cohesively with all of his team. He's able to maneuver around the map in a way that gets him a lead his team a lead and that's just something that I've seen him impact the game in all split long yes there have been a few bad games but everybody has those so you can't really hold that against him next up on the list is crown so I know before you click away 
Before you click away, please hear me out. I feel like Crown has been the best performing mid laner in the NALCS this split. Now, some people are going to fanboy over Jensen and Bjergsen, and I like those players too, and you guys know me. Without a doubt, I would have those players in here if they were performing at the standard that we know that they should. And I'll be getting to those two players later on down the line. I feel like everything Crown does as a mid laner is overall what you need. He can not only beat his opponent very easily, he not only roams effectively, he knows where to be on the map, carries games alone by himself. This split alone, if they did not have him along with Meteos, Optic wouldn't even be in the playoffs. He's actually one of the best mid laners we have here, and that's why he is my NA first team all pro mid laner. Uh, this is probably no surprise to anyone. Double if is going to be the NA first team all pro ADC. He's pretty much a staple at the first place position. The only time I debated that he shouldn't have been here was last split when I actually put sneaky above him during the all pro team during the spring split overall double if just is everything you actually need for an adc lane threat carry threat overall you draft around him they get advantage they can push their advantage very effectively there he's always dishing out the maximum damage in team fights i think that he's just been overall the best adc this split and i'm pretty sure that's pretty noticeable to everybody else Next up on my list, and this rounds out the first all-pro team, is Core JJ. Nobody has been an impactful support just like this guy, and he's pretty much put up the same MVP quality performance that he put up last split. Now, this split, he does have some competition with that being in the long, in the long lines of Sven Skarin. Now, with Core JJ's point, he's just the all-package support that anybody needs. He's the guy that can effectively shot call around the map, put his team in various positions, and, and is able to deep ward, contest objectives, trade very effectively as a support, and he, more or less so, is a carry in his own right. Now, looking back at all of my first team all pro NALCS team all of these guys had to have met a certain criteria you can carry games you're the most impactful player on your team at, a, at various points in the game you are able to win games with how you're performing you're able to dictate pace around the map you are one of the sole reasons why your team is even at their position that you are and that's why these guys are all at my first all team NALCS uh, pros. <laughs> I probably said that kind of, you know, all messed up, but these guys are on my first team. Moving on to my second team, these guys were good, but they just weren't on the caliber that the first team was. Not saying these guys are bad, but these guys are also good too. Let's start it off with Impact. Now, Impact obviously has been pretty good since MSI. I, I feel like everything he's been doing has been working out very well. He is able to not only get lane advantages, and you're probably thinking, like, Impact getting lane advantages? When did this happen? Since, like, 2013, when it was on SKT? Impact has been absolutely incredible. I feel like the, the impact, no pun intended, he has on the game, it's just not the same like licorice is. It feels like when Impact gets a lead, it just kind of feels like you can beat him. When it feels like Licorice or Broken Blade have the impact, it kind of just feels like the game's over. And that's kind of the reason why I have him just a little bit lower than Licorice. It was a tie, but I in, ended up switching out at the last minute because I felt like Impact's overall performance was just a little bit less than Licorice. Even when Lic Licorice got his wrist uh, actually fixed or it was actually healing he actually performed even better than impact anyway but overall impact has looked really good since their run at msi where he got second place impact is my second uh all pro top laner and next is the most controversial pick probably but it shouldn't be because a lot of people would probably think i should put uh x smithy here oh no 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 medios has been if not first or second best jungler in the split, the way he is able to actually get his team rolling is more or less so the same medios that we've seen for a while. He's pretty much come back to, I would think, just a little bit less than the form that he was able to show on 100 Thieves and Cloud9 from back in the day. The way he actually maneuvers around the map, the way he actually is able to facilitate uh, ganks effectively, even if he can't speak to his, some of his laners, is actually bodes for some for some of his actual overall gameplay. Pathing is correctly. He's overall very flexible with the meta picks. He doesn't really go off and choose meta picks that aren't really in his comfort zone. He is very, very good on what he's able to do, and you can overall feel his impact in the game. And I feel like Minios has performed pretty well all split, and that's why he is going to be at my number second spot. The reason why he's at number second and instead of being at first for me was because there were certain points in 
the season where it's like he just wasn't there, and I didn't feel that with Sven Skarin because a, a jungler's presence should be felt during the game if you're actually really good. And I'm saying he's really good, and I feel like he deserves the second spot. Number number three for my second team is the mid laner is actually going to be Froggen. Yeah, this might be controversial controversial to some people as well. I feel like Froggen has been one of the best performing mid laners all split long. This guy has everything you'd possibly want. The issue with him and the reason why I couldn't put him at number one over Crown is because I feel like overall he's the overall self-focus on, on him kind of doesn't m explode well in the team. It, it's like, it, even if he's doing well, the team itself doesn't do well. And, like, a lot of the other players I've mentioned, like, if they're doing well, their team does well. But you cannot discredit his overall performance. He is very, very flexible, can easily win, win lane, impact the game. He makes a severe impact in the game, and you definitely feel that when he's playing. And I feel like he's been, been performing at an absolute incredible level. And I'm really, really happy to see him, well, in my opinion, up here this far. Now, I'm really glad NA's, well, non-North American mid lane talent is actually uh, coming out and swinging the split and not just being dominated by Jensen and Bjergsen. So going on to my ADC for my all-pro team, for a second all-pro team is Cody Sun. Now, Cody Sun is probably going to be a pick. A lot of people are going to probably, you know, feel like I'm, I'm just trolling or I'm some scrub. No, Cody Sun actually being a relative upgrade over Piglet in a certain aspect that Clutch Gaming needed really paid off later on. He's able to play the backline DPS AD carries very well, which is a lot of the AD carries in general. He's a a able to effectively position himself in team fights more better than a lot of what, what the ADCs were able to do. He was able to win lane effect effectively. Now, the reason why I, I emphasize that is because he, the clutch itself didn't really win too well against the top tier teams. But if if Cody Sun faced pretty much a, anybody that wasn't on his caliber, he crushed them. But I didn't feel like he was as good as Double If in certain aspects. Where I feel like Double If is the more overall complete player. I felt like Cody Sun was the little bit uh, less of that, and I that's why I have him at my number. Uh, to ADC on my all pro second team and the support of my all pro second team is going to be Biofrost. Now Biofrost has actually had a relatively really good split and shining where a lot of the other supports just kind of faltered. We saw Zazel uh, falter this split. We had Hakuho looking really solid last split falter. We had just a, an abundance of supports just not even play League of Legends, and Biofrost generally has been playing some really good League of Legends so far. He's able to get his impact on the game, as where I saw him playing like he was when he was actually on TSM. I felt like I had that Biofrost, that split. He's able to direct his team in a certain way, as you can feel like on the map, wherever he's going, they're going, wherever, it, it, wherever you know, Engage he's going, they're going with him. He's been performing really well, and that's why I have him on as my as my support for my second team. That rounds out my second team, and this is going to uh, finish off the video with my third all-pro team. Now, the criteria for my third team is that you were basically just the split you had was good, but then you also had a cold split as well. Like, we, we saw these guys kind of turn it on a little bit too late, but if these guys did turn it on, basically at the first part of the split, I would have had these guys almost at, like, competing for first and second. I do feel like these third players have what it takes to be in, in my actual all-pro team, but it just is going to take a little, a little bit of time to get actually back there. Starting off, let's go. We got Broken Blade. Now, most people are going to be like, what in the world? Broken Blade over Ruin? Yes, Broken Blade over Ruin, definitely. Ruin is pretty much just another version of Impact, but Broken Blade is not. Broken Blade can be a better version of Impact on carries and tanks. His impact in the game is actually felt, and a lot of the dictations that TSM was able to get through him was, was when they were actually able to funnel around the map differently. Yes, TSM had a very, very rough split, but I feel like Broken Blade has been performing very, very well overall when they put so much pressure on him he's able to absorb it effectively he actually it, from what i saw really doesn't die to too many ganks because he's so smart about when the ganks are actually coming and i feel like that's a really good quality in a player like him uh wiggly everybody everybody's um mvp light candidate this split i feel like wiggly has had an outstanding performance this split coming out and being a superstar carry jungler to a certain point he himself is not a superstar but his performance resonated that of a superstar in, in in which where he was able to get around the map and effectively make his laners look better than what they were now i do feel like that that overall impact of what he was able to do translated into, into how clg had been performing well we saw when dark sean was actually uh 
kicked off CLG. He had actually started to shine. And most people are probably going, going to just f utterly flame me for not having Smithy up here. But I will explain certain controversial picks as a reason why they're not actually up here. Uh, Niski. C9's Niski. Yes, and this is no C9 fanboy biased over here. I feel like Niski has been performing actually low-key very well overall with how flexible he's able to be, how he's able to pair up with Sven Skarin and go around the map and start getting objectives to where they need to be possible. He engages very well. He's just an overall good, complete mid laner that you need. That's not the best, but it's good for what he's able to provide. Now, the reason why people like Bjergsen and Jensen aren't here right now is because I felt like I didn't really feel Jensen's performance this split. Y you know, it's very up and down. Uh, Bjergsen had a really uh, let, let, let's say subpar split, it wasn't bad, but I just didn't feel like he had that really good of a split. And X Smithy will go in that category as well, where X Smithy kind of just felt kind of just there and just felt like Jensen and Bjergsen in the split. I'm not saying that those guys couldn't be on my all pro team when the, ne the next split starts. What I'm saying, and, and I'm also not saying they're not good, what I'm saying is that from this split, what I saw was not this type of level. And Niski, I felt like performed very well and deserving of my last mid laner spot for my all pro third team. ADC is actually Arrow. Arrow has actually been performing very, very well. He's actually slowly becoming that carry threat that he used to be. He had been picking things like the Draven having a massive impact in the game. And even when he was able to get ahead in a lot of games, they were able to actually win. And I felt like his overall performance has been very, very solid uh, out of the, well, mud, mud. How, how, how would I feel? How would, how would I pair How would I actually say this? His performance was really well to a certain point that was not as garbage as a lot of the other AD carries. And I felt like he stood out uh, amongst the rest. I know some people are, are going to say 6A, but I felt like 6A didn't perform as well as a lot of people are saying he, he did actually. I felt like he was okay, you know, but I just really didn't I actually feel that. And the last person on the list for my All-Pro 3rd team is Vulcan. Vulcan has been a, quietly a really, really good support, engaging very properly. He's a, able to trade effectively. Now he's able to, well, pretty much now with Cody Sun getting a lot more synergy, go even in lane. And I feel like he's been actually a really good performing support where the other supports have kind of faltered. And I feel like he's a very underrated support and well, what he was able to actually provide for Clutch this split alone. Now, in a couple of more splits, we could be talking about this guy being a top three support. I wouldn't even doubt that. But that is my, you know, NALCS All Pro teams. As you guys know, my first team is probably going to get me flamed by some people. But hey, it's my opinion. You know, I feel like these players have been performing the best at their positions. Most people are probably going to be like, well, Crown and Jen with Jensen and Bjergsen aren't, aren't in number one spot. You must be trolling. Or, no, I'm not. Crown's actually been performing really well. If you think he's not, you have no brain and your IQ is probably the level of two or the number of two. Whatever level your IQ is low, if you think this guy's not been performing at a first place all pro mid laner level. Yes, I know he his team loses, but that's not because of him. If they didn't have this guy, you lose. That's just how bad it would be. But even outside of that, his overall performance is there and you can see it in the game. Uh and another controversial pick would, would probably just not having it Smithy appear. I just I mean X Smithy has this thing where he's consistent, right? Well, yeah, these guys, well, the he's consistent. He's very consistent at certain points. Uh, and also, Wiggly was super consistent this split. But they also impacted the game and carried games. X Smithy kind of just kind of like sat there. And I didn't really resonate with that very well. But see you later, guys. That is my uh, NA LCS, NA LCS All Pro teams. Uh, my first team is probably going to get me flamed. But hey, it's my opinion. It is what it is at the end of the day. See you guys later. Bye. I'm the Nightwing signing out. Way of Life, Way of Life Esports out. Peace.